Alright, hello everyone and welcome to WWE Discussion. I'm your host and WWE enthusiast Dougie Doug, and today's episode I'm going to be discussing NXT 2.0 September 6, 2022 episode. So NXT Worlds Collide, um, pretty much brought about the end of NXT UK. Um, yeah, there was a bunch of title unification matches that pretty much ended off the title reigns of uh, superstars on NXT UK. Braun Breaker and Mandy Rose were able to unify the titles, um, the NXT UK title and the NXT women's title, um, and then Pretty Deadly pulled off a win against Diamond Mind to basically become the NXT Tag Team Champions. So this episode of NXT focused on dealing with the fallout from that, um, and the card in this show was pretty packed. I mean, there was quite a few, there were some matches on this card that certainly delivered, uh, they were given a good amount of time, so that certainly helped as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, with that, we'll go ahead and get right into the action. Starting with, uh, Monico, Monico Sadamora versus Roxanne Perez, and this was everything it promised to be and more. Perez looked like a completely different wrestler, able to show what she could really do in the ring, working with a veteran like Sadamora versus working with somebody that doesn't have as much experience. Um, and working with Satmore also gave her a spotlight and one that she shined in. Uh, even though she didn't win the match, she still was a winner in a different way um, toward um, walking out of the match. In fact, she probably benefited more from losing the match because if there's a rematch that will happen, that rematch will certainly be even better, especially if Perez wins. Now the final boss with this win I don't know if it puts her in line for a singles match with Mandy Rose, but I'd have to imagine at some point that's the direction NXT is going to want to go. I just don't know if that means that Satmore is up next or what. But considering the match I was going to lie with the triple threat match, I'd be curious to see what Satmore and Rose can do together in a singles match. Uh, meanwhile, Perez uh, still has some unfinished business core Jade, as both of those ladies will continue to push them, push themselves up the ranks in NXT. Just be interesting to see who gets uh, a spot ahead of the other Perez or Jade. Nonetheless, though, hopefully the rematch uh, between those two is better than the first match. Nathan Frazier versus Axinium, and um, this was a match that didn't really have like a story going into it, uh, but rather the contest itself kind of built the story um, using the athleticism and physical work of both of these guys. They were flying around the ring before they settled down and leaned into some technical offense down the stretch. Uh, best showcase for either of these guys in NXT so far. And this was only match one of potentially three. And hopefully Frazier will be able to pick up a win in the second round to make sure this goes for the 4-3. As these two could certainly use the spotlight and... You know, WWE booking, honestly, it hasn't, you know, it still is predictable at times. So, I wouldn't be surprised if Frazier picked up the win. And it wouldn't really be a bad thing either, because again, putting these guys in the ring for three matches, you're going you're gonna to produce some, you know, great in-ring content and also give these guys some, um, some much-needed uh, exposure. Uh, and then the show concludes with a tag team match. Braun Breaker and Tyler Bright versus uh, Joe and Mark Coffey of Callis. And after the match, JD McDonald came out of nowhere and attacked Bright from behind and then retreated before Breaker could get to him. So, I guess the question of what Tyler Bright is doing after Worlds Collide has been answered, and that's feuding with JD McDonald. So, that should be a good. <laughs> that should be a nice little feud. McDonald gets a nice little win over Wesley. They had a pretty good match themselves earlier in the show. And uh, McDonough, rather than be inserted right back into the title picture, instead gets the feud with Tyler, Tyler Brait. Um, so that should be a good thing for both guys. Uh, Breaker, um, despite, you know, working well and looking great with a uh, pair of Brait here, unlikely that he goes into the tag team division um, anytime soon, if at all. Um, however, this might be and it just might be a way to bring the NXT champion to the main roster when he is done with NXT, having him work with another young veteran in a tag team. Um, that could be one way to bring him about. Granted, I don't think it's entirely necessary. I think if he won in as a singles competitor in the main roster, which of which running the show, I think he could 
you know, kind of pick up where he left off from NXT and just kind of build from there, um, raising his game along with the level of competition. So, I, I, you know, a tag team certainly is an interesting idea. It would all come down to who he would be paired with, but I certainly think he'd also be just as fine on his own. Um, as for Gallus, well, the coffee had yeah, Joe and Mark Coffey, reliable tag team, and they'll rebound. However, they've lost too many matches to start their run in NXT, so it's going to take some time for them to get back into title contention again. But, um, you know, that just all it takes is one win to get that ball rolling. So I guess we'll see what happens there. <clears throat> I know uh, the Koreans are challenging pretty deadly for a uh, mat for the NXT titles next week. Um, also, next week, the one year anniversary of NXT 2.0. And honestly, I'd say the first year of NXT 2.0 was a success. Bit of a, you know, rough start. But honestly, I don't think it was going to be like a smooth start to it. You know, you're changing up the entire brand. And you're kind of featuring some new stars that haven't really had the television time that, you know, the stars of NXT Black and Gold had. But I think, you know... People kind of came into their own. You saw Braun Breaker. He's had a couple title runs of NXT with the NXT World Title. He's been a great champion, a great competitor. Carmelo Hayes, probably the best out of all of them, the A champion. I mean, it's one thing around the say he's, he's the A champion, but he proves it every single week. Um, you know, even Mandy Rose, you know, she's not exactly a new competitor, but she had quite the uh, revitalized run to her or she said, yeah, she's revitalized her career and had quite the run in NXT 2.0. So, again, I'd say, you know, for a, a year of this stuff, it's been a pretty good year. Again, bit of a rocky start, but they figured it out. Um, yeah, and with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up this episode of WWE Discussion. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit that like button down below.